Hello and welcome to my Teams Lab. My name is James and today we're going to be reviewing a new work focused headset from Microsoft. It's called the Microsoft Modern Wireless Headset and is part of Microsoft's new Modern Accessories range. This is a Bluetooth headset that is Teams certified and only costs 95 US dollars. And just to let you know, this review device was purchased by me and was not sent to me by Microsoft. So this is a completely impartial review. So let's get started. As a comparison for this review, I will be referencing the Jabra Evolve 65, which has been a long-standing default choice as far as low-end Bluetooth headsets go. That said, the Jabra Evolve 65 still retails for two times the price of the modern wireless headset. So if Microsoft have managed to get anywhere close to the Jabra, then it will be an impressive feat. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get the Microsoft modern wireless headset, you get a charging cable, which is USB-A to USB-C. You get a USB-A dongle. You get a quick start guide and safety and warranty documents. Notable exceptions from the box are that there is no carrying case and there is no charging stand supplied with the modern wireless headset. This is obviously a part of keeping the price down, so I can't really knock them for that. The good news is that the modern wireless headset has a USB-C connector so it can be plugged in either way up, unlike a micro USB cable. The headset is quite light. It weighs in 138 grams, which feels basically the same as the Jabra Evolve 65, which weighs in at 110 grams. The headset is an all plastic construction, and the build quality is impressive, with a soft touch plastic being used throughout. There is no play or rattles in any of the components, and everything feels quite solid. The synthetic leather on the ear cuffs is nice and soft, and it gives enough padding to be comfortable. There is also the same leatherette material and padding used around the top of the headband, which adds some comfort for the top of your head. There are also several buttons and switches on the device. It has a power switch, and this is a really nice feeling switch that's very satisfying when you switch it. The headset will say goodbye when you turn it off and announces the remaining battery life and connection status when you switch it on, which is a nice touch. It also has a dedicated Bluetooth pairing button for pairing with a secondary audio device such as your mobile phone. It has a Teams button which can be used to bring the Teams client to the foreground and also do context specific functions like joining upcoming conference calls. It has a dedicated mute button. This is integrated with Teams and will turn on and off the software mute in the Teams client when you press it. There's also a setting that allows you to hold down the mute button to temporarily come off mute and say a few words. And then when you release the mute button, you go back onto mute again. It also has a call button. This can be used to hang up and answer calls. And there's also a volume ring on the outside of the right ear cup. This is something that I wasn't aware of until I got the device. The boom arm also has a mute light on it, which you can see from your peripheral vision when you're wearing the headset, which is a really nice touch. This is a team certified headset. So the buttons have been designed to work best with the Microsoft Teams application. If you were to use the headset with Zoom, you would find that the mute button would still work as it hard mutes your microphone. However, in the Zoom app, it doesn't show you as being muted within the client. The volume knob will still control the volume because it does this at a Windows speaker level rather than at a Zoom application level. The Teams button and the Hangout button, however, do not do anything as far as Zoom is concerned. Something that I find to be super important for long-term use with a headset is the clamping force of the headset. This is the pressure that the headset puts on your ears when you have it on your head. For a headset, it's important that the design takes this into consideration and should apply about the same amount of pressure on your ears, no matter how wide your head is. I personally have a big head, so when a headset does this, I can't wear it for a very long. The good news is that the Microsoft have done a nice job here with the clamping pressure and it doesn't crush your ears too badly. One of the disappointing parts about the headset design is that the ear cups don't rotate. They're fixed in place with a very slight forward rotation angle. The rotation is difficult to see, but if you put the headset on backwards by accident, you will immediately notice it. This lack of additional manual rotation is what I personally find leads to ear fatigue when using this headset. I wore this headset for a seven hour online training course the other day and found that by the last hour I was starting to notice that the rear of my ears were getting sore. 
This is obviously a fairly extreme case, and with normal usage and a few meetings a day, really, you should be fine. Another interesting thing about the design here is that the mic boom is on the left-hand ear cup and can't be rotated the other way, which means that you can only wear the headset with the boom on the left-hand side. The headset ships with a USB-A dongle for plugging into the computer. When you plug it into the PC, it will be automatically selected by the Teams client as your audio device, which is a great feature. The headset can be paired with one other device in addition to the dongle. It's important to note that you should always try and use the dongle and not directly Bluetooth pair with your PC. This is because you'll get much higher audio quality connection when using the dongle. The dongle also has an LED indicator on it, which tells you if you're in a call or if you're on mute. The modern wireless headset has 28mm moving coil speaker drivers in each ear cup. I find that in meetings, the headset quality for speech is pretty good. I've been able to hear everyone clearly without any issues at all. In order to get a good sound when listening to music though, you need to ensure that there is a good seal between the ear cups and your ear canal. If there is any gap there, I found that the music will immediately lose bass and will sound weak and heavily EQ'd. In general, I would say that if you're listening to bangers at work in between your meetings, this may not be the headset for you. If you are mostly looking for a good headset that you may occasionally listen to music on, then you still will be happy with this one. The microphones on the modern wireless headset are documented as being dual beamforming microphones. This means that they use two microphones to isolate the sound from your face and not so much from the office environment around you. From looking at the boom, there appears to be a mic hole about halfway down the outside, which is presumably being used for background noise reduction. From testing with the TV on in the background, I've found that the background noise rejection is actually pretty good in this case. The boom arm itself sits a bit further away from your mouth than what a full length boom arm normally would. In my experience, the further away a mic is from your mouth, the worse the sound quality and in this case, that concept seems to hold up. I found that the audio from the microphone is a bit boxy sounding and also seems to be a bit artifacty, which may be due to the SBC codec being used. Compared to the Jabra Evolve 65, I find the microphone on the modern wireless headset to be a bit more filtered sounding. Here's a comparison of the modern wireless headset and the Jabra Evolve 65 in a quiet room. This is a test with the Jabra Evolve 65 and the Jabra Link 370 dongle. This is a microphone test with the Microsoft Modern Wireless headset using the Microsoft USB Link dongle. What do you think? This headset is rated as having up to 50 hours worth of music listening time and up to 30 hours worth of talk time on a single charge. These numbers are amazing compared to older Bluetooth headsets like the Jabra Evolve 65, which tend to have around half that. The other day, I literally spent two straight seven hour days on online training via video conference. And after 14 hours of use, the headset still said that I had over 15 hours worth of battery life left. This is absolutely amazing and means that people that are only doing a few conferences a day could pretty confidently go a whole week without charging. So battery life on this headset gets a big tick from me. The Microsoft Modern Wireless headset is rated at 30 meters in open spaces when using the supplied USB dongle. From testing I've done in my house, this has got me from one end of the house to the other before I started to get dropouts. I compared this to the Jabra Evolve while listening to music and found that the Modern Wireless headset actually outperformed it and I was able to get about one room further away before getting dropouts. So once again, this is generally very impressive for a Bluetooth headset, and even more impressive when you consider that it's probably the cheapest team certified wireless headset on the market right now. Something that the modern wireless headset cannot do is become a USB cabled headset when it's plugged into the PC via the cable. This is a feature that's supported by the Jabra Evolve 65 and can get you better audio quality for those extra special calls when you need to ensure that there are no issues. This is something that I've seen other vendors add with firmware updates in the past. So let's hope that Microsoft considers adding this if possible. All the new Microsoft Modern Accessories range, which includes this headset, can be controlled by a piece of software called the Microsoft Accessory Center. 
and is available via the Microsoft App Store. As far as I can tell, there is no other direct download site on the internet where you can get this software from. The software itself only offers a few settings at the moment, which I'm hoping gets added to over time. The current settings include turning on and off the voice prompts and controlling the voice prompt language and accent. There is also a switch for the push to talk mute functionality that I mentioned earlier and an overall sound level limiter. So let's quickly recap on the pros and cons. The pros, the price. It's very cheap for a Bluetooth headset. The battery life, it's got 30 hours of talk time, which is fantastic. The range, for a Bluetooth headset, I found it to be very good. The cons, the mic quality. This is the main reason that I wouldn't be switching to this headset. No earpiece rotation. No swivel means less comfort. And no USB cabled audio for those special calls where you need higher quality. To me, this product seems like it was built to a specific affordable price point in order to further democratize higher quality audio devices for those still using their Apple earbuds for conference calls. This is not to say that this is a low quality product though. It's likely that all of the Microsoft modern accessories are actually loss leaders for them to raise the user experience levels on their Teams platform. This I applaud because conference calls are generally only as good as the lowest quality audio device that's on them. This is ultimately great for consumers that only have a budget of $100 but really want to be wireless and not be chained to their PC all day with cables. So if you're in the market to get a wireless headset and you only have $100 to spend, then this is the headset for you. However, if you have some more budget than this, then picking up a Jabra Evolve 65 while they're still on the market may be a better option. Or if you're willing to spend the big bucks, then there are many other Teams certified headsets from Poly, Jabra, Yealink, and Sennheiser that you can choose from. If you like this review, give a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Until next time, see you later.